It's been just over six years since Shovel Knight's monumental Kickstarter, and as of December 2019, the Shovel Knight collection was complete, packaged as Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. As they've said themselves, Yacht Club Games have poured their heart and souls into this game, so while the following content might be common knowledge to avid shovelers, I hope this video does a good job of showcasing their attention to detail. I'm D-Pad Gamer, and in this one we'll be looking at a bunch of easter eggs in Shovel Knight, which of course will include some spoilers. Starting off as Shovel Knight himself, after entering Pridemore Keep, if you do the unthinkable in a side-scroller and go left, you'll eventually find this area where breaking the wall reveals Yacht Club's very own logo. But of course, this isn't a self-serving reference. The logo floats above music sheet number 23, which, if turned into the bard back in town, yields this bit of insight. My first publicly performed layer theme. You might say it kickstarted my career. Oh, and on that topic, there's of course the famed Hall of Champions, an optional stage which is described as a monument to those who founded this great land. Inside, among other things, you can find numerous portraits which each represent individuals who donated $200 or more to the Kickstarter campaign. It's seen some adjustments through the various patches, and these days, below the Far East Secret Room, you can find an item called the Curious Map, which initiates a side quest based on the version you're playing on. For those on the Xbox One and PC versions, the Curious Map has an interesting symbol on it, unlocking the mysterious area which is located between the Trubal Pond and the Explodatorium. It's here that you encounter Rash, Zitz, and Pimple of Battletoads fame. When you're totally ready to train with them, Shovel Knight will have to repel down while battling Zitz, race through a tunnel while fighting Pimple and dodging objects, and then a final battle against Rash which has the ability to summon his two companions. The repelling and speeder bike sections are homages to the classic Battletoad stages Wookie Hole and Turbo Tunnel respectively, and along the way you can pause to enjoy that thumpin' Battletoads pause music. After your training is complete, they'll dub Shovel Knight an honorary toad and gift him the Toad Gear, which is a set of armor that turns his usual shovel attack into a 3 hit thrusting combo, which can be used to stun your target. It also allows you to run, do a shoulder bash, and even majestically pose, all of which play very similar to, well, Battletoads. On the other hand, if you're playing on a Sony version of the game, when you retrieve the Curious Map, you'll find an optional wandering encounter on the world map. Once encountered, Shovel Knight will assume that this mysterious opponent is the Black Knight, but instead, Kratos from God of War will reveal himself and then they'll battle it out. Much like after the encounter with the Battletoads, Shovel Knight will obtain a special item, though this one is the Gravedigger Shovel, which, when given to the Armorer, is made into the Armor of Chaos, which allows Shovel Knight to get a feel for the Gardening of War games. Now that we've discussed both of those, very interesting cameos, you should know that Yacht Club Games have gone and confirmed that both Battletoads and God of War are canon in Shovel Knight lore. Apparently, his uh, totally encounter takes place somewhere after the fifth installment of Battletoads, and uh, as for the crossing blades with Kratos, God of War's director, Cory Barlog, suggested that it's canon, and Kratos stopped by the Apit Valley while on his way from Greece to Scandinavia. There's another mysterious character worth talking about, which can be seen running through the armor outpost. This blue, shovel-wielding fishy fellow is known as Fishhead, and if spoken to, he simply says, Hey, how's it going? Ah, it's nice to get that helmet off sometimes. Of course, this minor character led fans to speculate if Fishhead is actually what Shovel Knight looks like without his helmet. Well, not specifically confirmed, Yacht Club have definitely helped uh, feed the fire of intrigue more than a few times. On the Switch version, where the Shovel Knight amiibo allows you to access the Custom Knight feature, one of the unlockable costumes is Fishhead, which makes Shovel Knight look, well, like Fishhead. For Shovel Knight's crossover appearance in Rivals of Aether, he has a secret taunt where his helmet falls off revealing a Fishhead, and as part of the officially licensed statue of Shovel Knight made by first four figures, his usual helmet can be swapped out for a way too high quality Fishhead. Now the last nugget of detail I'd like to show off that's exclusive to Shovel Knight's campaign takes place right near the end of the game. During the final level, you'll be forced to defeat the whole Order of No Quarter in order to proceed. After you've won, they're hanging on for dear life by a chain, and they ask for your help. You can freely move on, or instead, if you're feeling generous, shovel the chain to pull them up one by one. Some will begrudgingly thank you, others will compliment your digging skills, and so on. If you do this while wearing the expensive ornate armor set, King Knight will compliment you, saying that you must have picked up on his style. And on the topic of bosses, oh look at that segue. 
three of them have their very own playable campaigns, Plague Knight, Spectre Knight, and King Knight. To go along with that, they all have some fun bits I'd like to show off. Going in order of release date, the Plague of Shadows campaign saw Plague Knight running, jumping, and throwing vials of various concoctions right into the faces of his enemies. His story takes place more or less at the same time as the one in Shovel of Hope, and helps give some characters more purpose. Uh, for example, while playing as Shovel Knight, Mona is a minor character who simply hosts a minigame below the village, but she's actually a close ally of Plague Knight and a romantic interest. So, after defeating each boss and retrieving their essence, Plagueer Sin returns to Mona's room in the Potionarium. After defeating the second boss, Plague Knight won't immediately descend, and you have the option of standing still and simply watching Mona dance by herself. After a bit, this will of course gift you the Creep Achievement. And from the subsequent awkward conversation, we learn that Mona likes to dance alone, and Plague Knight can't join because he has two left feet. Later in the campaign, you can purchase the Truple Chalice from an Alkalite in the Armor Outpost, which, if presented to the Truple King, will allow Plague Knight to dance while standing still by holding down, as well as purchase various different cloaks. Now he's a dancing machine everywhere except in front of Mona, because if he tried dancing there, it causes him to instead awkwardly twiddle his fingers. Aww. Oh. How cute. That said, standing still awkwardly can also be a viable combat strategy. Near the end of Plague Knight's campaign, after retrieving the final essence from the Enchantress, the combination of all that power creates a doppelganger which you must battle. You could also just stand still. If you don't do anything for about 30 seconds, during which none of these shadows attacks will touch you, he'll acknowledge your resolve, which allows you to move right into the final boss battle against the corrupted essence. Easy as that. Now, moving on, Spectre Knight also has a bit of a soft side, despite how much he tries to deny it. If you speak to the dancer in the Tower of Fate, she'll show off her joyful choreography only to be told off by Spectre Knight. This unlocks the cold shoulder gear, which means that pressing down on the D-pad will allow Spectre Knight to strike a too cool for school pose wherever he wants. If done in front of a skeletal sentry, they'll show hearts of appreciation. Now, if you wear the special Donovan set, which allows him to appear as he did before he died, performing the cold shoulder will instead make him dance. And also in the Tower of Fates, you can visit the library above the Magic Mirror, which is home to a single docile Mimic. If you hold down on the D-pad while next to it, Spectre Knight will look around before petting the Mimic. You could also knock over an orb that the Mimic will play with, which yields a bit of extra money. Oh, and uh, if you use the rail mail ability to grind across the floor in front of most NPCs, they don't really care. However, wandering tundra vikings will stop and watch in awe at Spectre's six skills. Oh, and another fun thing, in the challenge mode level uh, Dirt Claw Dash, you can head to the right instead of to the left, and actually witness Treasure Knight doing his, I assume, taxes. Yoshi could learn a thing or two from him. Now, much like dancing, all three of the playable bosses share the ability to visit their own room, which is always hidden just out of sight. Doing so gives you the get out of my room feat. For Plague Knight, his room is in the Explodatorium, hidden behind a destructible wall above the stage's boss room. Spectre's room can be found beneath the Lich Yard, and it's actually guarded by a super skeleton impersonating Spectre Knight who has been ordered to deny entry to anyone who isn't our edgy boy. And King Knight's room can be found in the Homestead, which is home to a few of his loyal subjects. Now, on that topic, King Knight is the protagonist of the recently-ish released King of Cards campaign. As such, it's quite possible that there are some fun easter eggs and details for him that I am just unaware of, but here still is uh, something neat. First off, it's worth knowing that as part of his moveset, King Knight can perform a shoulder bash, which can then be turned into a roll. And the game also has hundreds of hundreds cheat codes, which are activated by inputting them as the name of starting a new profile. For example, K and Rev Roll is a code which allows King Knight to hold down, charge, and release a powerful roll attack. Of course, Yacht Club made sure to include the following three variations, which give him either a blue, yellow, or red palette. I, I'm pretty sure that means Shovel Knight is technically the second best recent Sonic game right behind Sonic Mania. Oh, and while it's not necessarily referenced, the code K and Torna allows you to start with the Jara Boots, which have an unlimited spin time. Something, something Beyblade. From there, two noteworthy codes are X and Butt, and PL and JRJR. These both change the dialogue in some uh, nice subtle ways. The first one makes a bunch of commonly used words become but. 
Turn back, Butt Butt. There's nothing for you anymore. Stand aside, Black Butt. I've no quarrel with you. I must return to the Tower of Fate. But none of that matters, because anyone after the Enchantress has to go through me. Steal thy butt! The other is perhaps even more cursed, replacing words like me and you with Misa and Yusa. It's Jar Jar Binks mode. Misa am but a simple bot, but Misa have a big problem. And finally, the code Kuwagata, which is the Japanese word for stag beetle, will enable the graphical changes and quirks exclusive to the Japanese version of the game. As explained in an article on this endeavor, Yacht Club Games partnered with the experts at 8-4 to make the localization the highest quality possible. Since Shovel Knight itself is an homage to classic 8-bit games, the localization embodies a lot of those quirks that you'd expect from games back then. In addition to the expected Japanese text throughout the game, the logo now has a nice Japanese translation right alongside it. Also, Gastronomer and the Village will occasionally serve up a rice ball dish, the Midas coin now has a hole to reflect the design of some Japanese coins, they even changed up certain enemy color palettes, animated the grass in the plains, re-added the higher frame rate flying animations for the dragon whelps, and added extra details like running water for the village's fountain and a snooze bubble for Shovel Knight. And that's just a portion of the changes made specifically for the Japanese localization of the game. Like I mentioned at the start, Yacht Club Games have put a lot of work into making Shovel Knight special, and I hope I did a good enough job of showcasing that fact. It's launched! <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. Alright, are you ready? Let's get, I guess. Alright, we gotta get to work. Alright. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and maybe subscribe for some more videos from me. As always, I'd like to thank my channel members, with special thanks to Christy Contras and Pseudonymous for being super fans. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.